Optimization is a crucial tool in any good software engineer's tool belt. However, as with all tools, a good software engineer also knows when to use this tool. As Donald Knuth famously said in his paper, structured programming with go-to statements. Programmers waste enormous amounts of time thinking about or worrying about the speed of non-critical parts of their programs, and these attempts at efficiency actually have a strong negative impact when debugging and maintenance are concerned. We should forget about the small efficiencies, say about 97% of the time. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. Yet, we should not pass up our opportunities at that critical 3%. So, how do you know where that critical 3% is? Well, if you've ever spent some time optimizing code, you know that the 3% is not where you think it is. This video is a very short analysis of a fallacy that I've seen in many programmers, including myself, that I would like to try to dispel. In my last video, I had a segment that talked about the algorithm for finding a crafting recipe. So how do you check whether the player crafted a valid recipe? Well, the way I decided to do it was just to check every single possible valid recipe against what the player crafted. Many people pointed out in the comments that this algorithm is very inefficient, since we can use a hash to speed up the lookup. This is true, but as I stated in my rebuttal, this algorithm is run so infrequently and on such a small data set that the speed up that I would gain from the hash is negligible. So where's the disconnect? Many programmers learn about analyzing algorithms in college. One way we can analyze the performance of an algorithm is called big O complexity. Big O complexity is basically a way of talking about how an algorithm will perform in regards to the size of a data set. Well, there's an implicit assumption when using big O notation. Remember, the big O notation only gives us the trend of an algorithm as the data set approaches infinity. Well, what happens when we have a really small data set? What happens is, big O notation is not a very good indicator of the performance of that algorithm. Let's look at a very specific example. If an algorithm has a big O complexity of big O and factorial, we consider that a very poor algorithm. N factorial grows very quickly as we can see here. On the other hand, if an algorithm has big O1 complexity, that's the best case scenario. This implies the algorithm will run in the same amount of steps every time. But what happens when our data set consists of one element? Oh, would you look at that? The algorithms perform the same amount of operations. What about a data set of two elements? Hmm. The second algorithm is only two times slower, but that's still not that bad. What about five elements? Now the second algorithm is 120 times slower. Ugh, that's, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Or is it? The last thing we need to consider is how fast the computer is. In other words, if I threw a million things at it, how long does it take the computer to process all that information? The first thing we want is a baseline. If we look at the Steam hardware survey for February of 2022, we can see that the majority of users have a CPU capable of 2.3 gigahertz or faster. What is a gigahertz? One gigahertz is the measurement of how many cycles the CPU can accomplish in one second. What's a cycle? A cycle is like the atom, or at least the atom circa sometime in the 1800s. It's the smallest possible speed of something that a CPU can do, usually like an addition operation. This means we can measure common operations like multiplications, divisions, additions, etc. in cycles, and we can figure out how many of these operations a CPU is capable of doing in one second using the clock speed provided to us. Well, like I mentioned before, the majority of users according to the Steam hardware survey have a CPU with a base clock speed of at least 2.3 gigahertz. How many things can a CPU do in 2.3 gigahertz? Well, that's approximately 2.3 billion things in one second. That's billion with a B. This gives us a good baseline for our calculations. Let's go back to our hypothetical algorithm. <laughs> 120 things compared to one thing, that really doesn't matter since the CPU can calculate 120 things in around 5.2 times 10 to the minus eighth seconds or around 52 nanoseconds on our hypothetical CPU running at 2.3 gigahertz. Okay, okay. What if we bump it up to, say, 10 elements? That's 3.6 million elements now for our big O n factorial algorithm. Well, 
that's still only around 0.0015 seconds. What I'm trying to get at here is CPUs are way, way faster than we can usually comprehend. Programmers love to look at the big O complexity because it gives a good measurement for how your algorithm will generally trend. Keyword, generally. Sometimes your data sets are very small. If this algorithm was the simplest one you could come up with and your data set was only one element, I would say keep the big O and factorial algorithm. If your data set grows, then improve the algorithm. Now, let's get back to my original complaint. Many people continued to let me know that my crappy algorithms would lead to an inefficient crappy game. Never make statements like this unless you have access to the code and you have already profiled it yourself. The big O complexity of my algorithm was around big O n because of the way I was doing comparisons. This could be reduced to closer to big O one with a hash table, but is it worth it? In vanilla Minecraft, according to the wiki, there are 379 craftable recipes as of 1.16. My game has a grand total of five craftable recipes right now. Let's be gracious. Let's assume I was running on the scale of Minecraft and using this algorithm. How slow is it? Well, I went ahead and profiled the code. On average, out of 10,000 runs of the algorithm, with the worst case scenario, which is we don't find the correct element until the very end of the list, this algorithm took eight microseconds on a Minecraft 1.16 size dataset. Keep in mind, this algorithm is only run when a user adds or removes an element from the crafting table. So it's not even in a hot path or critical part of my code. How much faster is it if we use the hash to skip comparisons of the entire table? It takes it down to around 1.3 microseconds. Well, that's nine times faster, I hear you saying. Sure. So what? It's around seven microseconds faster in a non-critical code path. Why should I care about this at all? Okay, okay. What if I say, you know, have a million craftable recipes sometime way, way in the future, and I bet then this algorithm would do so horribly right? Well, not quite. This algorithm only takes around 18.3 milliseconds. Notice we've gone up in order of magnitude. However, the fast version takes around 2.4 milliseconds. It's still around nine times faster, but what does this mean in the grand context of the game? It means that even if the user hit the worst case scenario using my slow algorithm, the game may lag for one frame running at 60 frames per second. In other words, the game will skip one frame when you add or remove an element to the crafting table. Our outrageous scenario, one million recipes, will still only lag one frame. In other words, this quote, optimization, end quote, is utterly worthless. Okay, okay. I was interested in what this would look like scaled up to just outrageous proportions. What if we ran this algorithm on 100 million elements? In other words, what if we ran this on around 6.5 gigabytes worth of crafting recipes? Think about this for a moment. 6.5 gigabytes worth of crafting recipes. How big is 6.5 gigabytes? Have you ever seen one of these? This is one volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica. For comparison, this, this bad boy, that's huge, look at the size of that, this is 1,200 pages. Each volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica is around 1,000 pages. So, you know, give or take about the same size as this. Well, how many volumes are in the Encyclopedia Britannica? There are 32 volumes weighing in at around 130 pounds, according to Google. Do you know how big that is? That's the size of a large child, okay? 132 pounds. Well, how much information is that entire set of 32 books weighing in at 130 pounds? It's around a gigabyte, according to Google. Well, we have 6.5 gigabytes. That's six and a half sets of pure Encyclopedia Britannica books weighing in at almost half a ton. How long 
does it take us to find one word? One small word. Out of half a metric ton of books using my PC. Well, according to my benchmarks, two seconds. With the slow, unoptimized algorithm. Two seconds. Two seconds in half a metric ton worth of books. Okay, get it in your head. Our computers are so much faster than you could ever imagine. So much faster. Okay. It took longer for me to allocate the 6.5 gigabytes than it did for me to search through it for the correct recipe. I'm just, uh, okay, okay. In other words, please remember, for the love of God, big O complexity is great for determining how your algorithm runs as your data set approaches the size of infinity. But please, please, for the love of God, remember, infinity is very large. Most of us are probably never going to be working with infinite data sets. But when you are, when you're in that 3%, well, then I guess you can go ahead and optimize the crap out of this if you want.